If you like your comedy short, fast, and funny, you've come to the right place. Comedy Time presents Quick Laughs, guaranteed to make you laugh in 30 seconds or less. Things are way funnier, like movies. Movies like Harold and Kumar and uh, Precious. Thank you. Precious just sat on that guy. I saw Precious in 3D yesterday. Put me in a coma. You see, guys' Facebook picture's normal, right? We'll just gather with a beer. <laughs> Upload. Girls, it's a perfectly choreographed photo shoot. First of all, they get the girl with the longest arm in the middle, right? <laughs> She's got to get the angle, right? Then right next to her, you have the D-U-F-F, which is the designated ugly fat friend. Every girls group has one of those. She creates the contrast in the pictures, right? And if right now you're sitting there going, our group doesn't, that's because you're her. I love my girlfriend, her fiance, we're French now. She's hot and has low self-esteem, which is why she's with me. She hates her body, she's got that complex, you know? Like the other day she's sitting around, she's like, I wish my boobs looked better. So I put glasses on them. They look smarter. She reads two books before bed, it's quite a trick. I've made a decision in my life to be famous. I'm gonna be famous. I don't care what it takes. I don't care if I gotta go across the country stabbing and shooting people. I'm gonna make a name for myself. You're gonna read about me in Yahoo News. I wanna be famous. I've had a couple chances, you know, I was in this low budget horror movie. It was so low budget they were using flashlights for lighting. I played a guy who got to kidnap, molest, kill this very hot chick. It was a good role. I did such a good job at it that she told the director I gave her nightmares. She said she didn't want to do any more scenes with me because I creeped her out. Because I never broke character. I didn't have the heart to tell her I was never in character. <laughs> I was just being myself. Natural creepy. Gift I was born with. I uh, met this guy the other day and I was like, hi, nice to meet you, I'm Natasha. And he was like, hi, yeah, I'm, I've met you six times. <laughs> like, well, it's not my fault you don't have a look. <laughs> Baseball, big baseball fan, I like baseball. Good, good, weird in America, that's strange. I, uh, I don't understand one thing though, what's up with the first base coach? Like we, we need that guy? Cause unemployment's pretty high and that dude still has a job. All he does, for those of you that don't know, if the guy hits the ball, he tells him to run to first. Don't you naturally do that as a professional baseball player? <laughs> Sitting there's like, good job, you're a natural. I like how you came right to me. <laughs> okay, you know where to go now? No, second, you're gonna go to this first, one, two. Yeah, go to, after that I have no idea. We have a whole different coach. <laughs> that handles that area. I love Spanish television. It's, everyone's happy, they're smiling, there's music and dancing. This is the way real life should be. Even a toothpaste commercial is a party on Spanish television. <laughs> a little kid walks up to his mother like, Ah, oh, mi mamá, mis dientes son blancos con Aquafresh. <laughs> there's music, balloons, I'm dancing, Aquafresh. <laughs> Adios, plaque. <laughs> Adios, señor, ginger vitis. Ay! <laughs> I love that sound. Ay! I don't know if you guys remember, a couple years ago, there was um, this, this guy, he had this incurable case of tuberculosis. It was this highly fatal, highly contagious disease, and he was traveling overseas, and they had to put him in quarantine. And I was like, that's crazy that he has this crazy disease that can just kill somebody. And um, the craziest part of the story was that his, um, his girlfriend, he proposed to her, she knew he had this incurable disease, and she married him anyway. And I said, you know what this made me realize? I have never been in love. 
Sorry, these aren't the smartest jokes in the world, guys. I tried to go to college. I dropped out. A lot of people drop out to follow their dreams. Not me. I dropped out too hard. Wow. <laughs> Have you guys ever been to college? They want you to read what? All day? I showed up to college first day of class. They're like, read 5,000 pages. We'll see you on Thursday. I was like, excuse me. How do you drop a class? I'm gonna be doing that. That's too many pages by Thursday. <laughs>
because I grew up in the suburbs and I'm white, so that's just what we do. <laughs> Not really sure why, but that's just what happens. Uh, you know, and I wasn't even like one of those intimidating, like, you know, white kids who think they're black. I was like chubby with glasses, braces, wearing some like poorly fitted Sean John Terry cloth jumpsuit with like Air Force Ones with a backpack that had too much books in it on my way to mathletes. Nobody's scared. No one's intimidated. And the worst part about this like time period is like, you know, I, my family will pull out family photo albums and I'm in pictures like this. So like it'll be a picture of my grandma's birthday, everybody smiling behind her, all happy, she's ready to blow the candles out. I'm like, hurry up, grandma, I got stuff to do. <laughs> Posing like I'm on a, a Wu-Tang Clan album. <laughs> He's kind of like a philosopher, you know? So growing up, whenever I got in trouble, he would hit me with a proverb. This one day I got caught for shoplifting. He goes, Junior, can a donkey make love to a rabbit? It's like, what the f What does that have to do with shoplifting? It's not right! You cannot make a love to a donkey, it's not right! I had a hard time getting pregnant because I was old. And the doctor said I had advanced maternal age. I said, my husband's older than I am. What about him? They said, oh, it doesn't count for the man. I said, well, look, guys can be, what, 80 and still father a kid. You guys can have old wrinkled up sperm with bifocals on the end of its nose. <laughs> a walker to get up the fallopian tubes. Yeah, so I went on a flight once that was like this 11 hour flight from hell because there were kids running around everywhere, you know, that kind of flight. Yeah, I just thought it was interesting because did you know that when you fly with an animal, you have to make a reservation in advance because they only allow two animals per plane per flight. Okay, I just think it'd be great if they did something like that with kids. Yeah. Right, like allow the first two on board and put the rest in with luggage. <laughs> Oh, totally work. I mean, they're small, they don't need a lot of oxygen. And if they didn't make it, you just get frequent flyer miles. Oh, Joey didn't make it. Wanna go to Hawaii? I ask them simple questions. I say, guys, where are you going? Well, what are you doing? Hey, when are you gonna be back? And they say, bye mom, okay, whatever. They blow me off. So I'm thinking, okay. Clearly I've gotta change my delivery. So now I'm there, where you going? What you doing? When you gonna be, when you gonna be, when you gonna be back, ba 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 back, back, ba 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 back, back, ba 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 back. There, mom, stop. We will tell you whatever you wanna know. Just don't ever, ever do that again, mom. All the women that I meet in Los Angeles seem to think that because I'm from New Orleans, I like all my food cooked spicy. Everything ain't supposed to be spicy. Let me tell you this right now, I was dating a chick, everything she cooked, she said it was Cajun, everything. I was like, babe, why did you make spicy broccoli? I don't like spicy broccoli, why is this hot? Why is this hot? She was like, it's Cajun. I'm like, no, it's not. She was waking me up at nine o'clock in the morning fixing me spicy waffles. I don't eat spicy waffles. Why? It's too, too early in the morning for this type of seasoning. You know what I'm saying? I'll mess my whole week up. She was like, but it's Cajun. I was like, oh my God, there ain't no Cajun oatmeal. Where do you get this from? What cookbook is this? It's disgusting. It's a lot of things about phones I don't get. Somebody ever called you and you missed the call by two seconds, and I mean two. And you call right back and they don't pick up? Where did you go in two seconds? <laughs> like the person's like, well, he didn't pick up. <laughs> don't make no sense, man. It don't. If you don't know what Instagram is, it's a photo sharing application networking site. It takes the pictures you take and you share them with your friends and you can filter them to make them look really vintage and antique. Uh, like they were taken decades or even centuries ago if you want, which sounds very fun for some, but I don't need to see what I would look like in slave days. <laughs> Doesn't thrill me. <laughs> it's 
not that exciting for me to see those. <laughs> a picture of me and the homies chilling is fine until you upload it on Instagram, then it's me and the homies up for auction, and that's not... I'm not going to like those photographs. <laughs> Take a picture of me, fine, I don't care, it's fine. Take a photograph of me, but as soon as you upload it to Instagram, it's gonna be Django. After we had the second baby, uh, my friends are like, oh, congratulations, but you have two kids and you have, you're doing comedy. Do you think they will get in the way of your career? And I'm like, no, not at all, because I don't have a career. <laughs> I'm an unknown comic who goes to open mics to vent my frustration, then go home and cry. <laughs> Ladies, I love you, man, but don't you have that friend that has the big ring and she always wants to show it off? You ever see this girl? She's the worst. I'm like, hey, girl, how you been? Yeah. This is my ring. I just want to let you know I'm going to show this off no matter what. That girl, all right? She's like, I need a midget to hold up my hand because this ring is heavy. That girl. Relationships are really hard, though, actually. They're, they're, I went on a date with a guy the other night who was in a band. Uh, and guys, ladies might be able to relate. To this when guys are in a band they play guitar whatever they think it's a really good idea to like play guitar one-on-one -on -one to you it is an awful idea you guys let me just put it it's the most awkward thing ever you don't know where to look like do you look at the guy or like at the guitar like do you sway like what do you hold up a lighter like free bird just shout suggestion like all i'm thinking is when can this end like i did not buy a ticket to your one-man concert this is i'd like a refund I feel like it's as if, like, if I went on a date and I brought him back to my apartment and started doing stand-up comedy one-on-one -on -one to him, like, I bring him back and I'm like, hey, who's getting laid tonight? Not this guy, not this guy, huh? Where are you going? The state's not over. <laughs> it's hard to lose weight because I grew up in a Latino home. It's hard to lose weight, man, because we cook with lard, manteca, 5,000 calories per serving. <laughs> My mama will put manteca, lard on everything. Pork chops, bacon, chorizo, ham. I had a heart attack when I was 12. I remember all playing kickball. What the hell? Call the teacher. I didn't know it was a heart attack. I thought I was turning into Spider-Man. I've been jogging the DMX lately. Yeah, it gets you pumped. You know, I'm out there jogging fast, peeing on fire hydrants, hating cops, barking, disrespecting women. But I've been listening closely to the DMX lyrics, and I learned that if DMX was on fire, he would stop, drop, shut them down, open up shop, oh, no, cause that's how Rough Riders and then roll. He do all that on fire. He shut down, open up a small shop on fire. And he smokes crack so he's on fire all the time. DMX is an entrepreneur. It just sucks that the only socially acceptable place to buy a stranger something is at a bar? Like somehow it's totally cool buying someone you've never met a mild poison, but you can't get them something actually practical? Like I couldn't be at the mall and see a cute girl and be like, hey girl, I'ma get you some toothpaste. So yeah, I'm a mom, we got two kids. Um, people say being a mom is the hardest job in the world, but it's a little bit easier if you just lie to your kids. Like I told my kids that our cat is magic and it poops money. And then every few days I just sprinkle a little cash in the litter box. Uh, yeah, they fought over who got to clean out the cat box. <laughs> I swear to God, Queens was voted the nicest borough out of all New York City because we're the only ones that say please and thank you while we're robbing you. 
that's our street cred. Well, I go to a therapist. I was in there the other day talking about intimacy. Said to me, Andy, what does intimacy mean to you? I said, intimacy is, I don't know, like having sex. Said, no, Andy, intimacy is when you're opening up making yourself vulnerable, showing your shortcomings. <laughs> Said, yeah, having sex. It's interesting, New York, living in New York, it always, like, it never ceases to amaze me, especially, like, riding on the trains. Because back home in Atlanta, it's, like, almost required that you get up for the elderly people. Like, other people will look at you and be like, you need to get up, but here in New York, Y'all don't get up for nobody. Like, <laughs> y'all don't get up for old people, crippled people. It could be a pregnant lady coming onto the train. If she not having her baby on the train, y'all like, so we not getting up. <laughs> and even then, if she is having her baby on the train, somebody gonna yell out, name your baby late, cause that's what it's making me. <laughs> uh, I'm an actor. Uh, I'm doing the acting thing in Los Angeles. I go out for a lot of what I like to call uh, Weepy bitches. Uh, anybody know? Uh, weepy bitches. Um, let, me, let me give you an example of a weepy bitch that I played. These are the words in the script verbatim from a real audition I went on. It goes like this. Okay. If I go back to Pakistan... <laughs> My father will burn me at the stake because I am in love with a white man named Todd. <laughs> 